I began to talk to Jesus. I said, Lord, did you leave us? <laughs> you said. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We rejoice and we are so glad in it. Let's come in and prepare to worship the Lord today, to hear a word from the Lord today, to pray one for another. I invite you to share this. If you're on the phone, we thank God for your presence. Share this, share this as you're coming in, share this. Hey, Angela, hey, Brindy, good to see y'all. God bless you. We're going to start in just a few minutes. bless all my friends on the phone. We thank God for you being here with us today. How are you doing? I pray that you're doing well. Thank God for another day's journey and I'm so glad. I want to welcome my mom on and all my family members that are with us on the phone. Those of you who are on Facebook, please share this. If you're on the phone and you can text this to someone so that they can call in and hear and be with us in this virtual time of meditation and prayer. God bless you, Tiffany. God bless you, Sabrina. God bless you, Ruth. Pray that you all are doing well today. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome. Make sure you're sharing this. Thank you so much for those hearts. We praise God for you. Those of you on the phone, hold on. We're going to start in just a few minutes. Hold on. How many happy just to be alive? How many know that you're blessed today? Come on, send up some hearts. Those of you at home, why don't you worship the Lord at home with us right now? God bless you, my cousin. All of my family, God bless you. So good to have you on with us today. We're about to start. Make sure you're hitting that share button. serve a great God that is great and greatly to be praised. He's worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the praise. He deserves our praise. He deserves our attention. He deserves our adulation. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves, for we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates. These are the virtual gates right now with thanksgiving. Come in with praise. Know ye that the Lord, he is our God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. So good to be with you, the people of God. We're going to begin in just a moment. We're just giving a little bit of time for everybody to find us and to catch up with us. Praise God for his goodness and his grace and his mercy, his kindness. It all belongs to him. And we're thankful, grateful. Anybody thankful this morning? 
I'm thankful, Sabrina. Tiffany, I'm thankful. Ruth, I am so thankful. Hewis, I am so thankful to God for you and Gwen and Brenda, Patricia, Gael, God bless you. Reverend Amelia Hall, the Lord bless you. Auntie Pat, God bless you. Aunt Rita, God bless you. DIT Rodney Blunt, what a joy it is to be here with the people of God. God bless all of you. Hey, Beatrice, God bless you. Miss Lala's in the house. Hey, First Lady is in the house. Yes, everything is all right now. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hope you're enjoying your family during this time. Uh, that we are shut in. You know, it's been such a joy to get to know my family all over again. and Just to spend time hanging out with them when I'm not working on this kind of stuff. <laughs> Praise God for their patience and your patience. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here with you. God bless you, Cynthia. Cheryl, God bless you. So good to see you guys today. Thank you for coming on in the room. Thank you for those hearts. Thank you so much for sharing this with others that they can find us today. Praise God. We're not going to complain at all today. I could tell you how my morning started out. I could tell you what I wanted to do, what didn't work and what did work. But I want to tell you how good God is today. And as we get ready to get started here, those of you on the phone, I'm so thankful again for you for taking the time to be with me today for this little while as we worship and celebrate and praise our true and living God. We're glad that you're in the service First timers, we're glad you're here. If you're here on Bishop Littman Live for the first time or first time with 30 days of prayer, we welcome you. If it's your first time with us and uh, you're on Facebook, why don't you just type that in? First time. Gwen, blessings to you. Hey, Miss Lily, God bless you. Jasmine, God bless you. Is that my friend, the deacon? Hey, bro, Moore, God bless you. Hey, Tiffany, God bless you. Josette Walker, God bless you. Hey, Sharon, blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Deacon Vince. Hey, Aunt Anne, God bless you. Good to see you today. Good to see you today. Amen. 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 And those of you on the phone, it's good to know that you're there. It's just good to be alive, to know who we are, to know where we are, to know whose we are, and to have God's word still at work in our lives. Well, praise God. Praise God. Thomas, blessings to you. First time. All right. We are so glad to welcome everybody. Give a round of applause to our first time visitor. Amen. Brother Thomas. Yvonne, you're here for the first time? All right. Wonderful. Hey, Sister Anne. Charlene, God bless you. Janet, how you doing? Happy Monday to you as well. Thankful for all of our first time visitors. As we would say if we were at the New Mountaintop Cathedral, don't let your first time be your last time. <laughs> the first time you come in, you're a friend, but after that, you're family. And so we welcome you, all of our first time attendees today. This is 30 Days of Prayer. And um, we began about March 21st, I think it was. And so initially the Lord had led me to do 30 Days of Prayer, which would lead us to about April 21st. I think my dates are correct. And uh, we'll see. Yeah, I remember you, Thomas. God bless you. Yes. We'll see what the Lord says next after we get a few days down the road now and see what the Lord says. So, hey, Alicia, God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you for your support. Sister Blackburn, thank you for bringing in new members into the flock. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start. I know that those on the phone may have been there for a little while, and certainly people will continue to come in. And I'm just grateful and thankful to our great God again for bringing us this far and uh, we miss you too. We miss all of you, our, all, all of those who have 
I moved to other cities, to other states, other areas. And uh, one great thing about this for me has been that I've been able to see uh, so many come from uh, different areas of the metro Atlanta. My sister-in-law, sister-in-love is here, Lamisha. Hey, Robbie May, how you doing, girl? And uh, I've seen so many of our members who are scattered now on different sides of town, able to come in and uh, be a part. Uh, Tam Vic, I'm talking about y'all in particular. Um, and I won't call names right now because names will escape me. And there's so many new mountain toppers all over the place. But I'm so glad to be joined here with you, Carol. Good to see you today. We're going to go ahead and begin. I want to share something with you today. I want to share something with you today. I think it's going to bless you. For the next several days, we're going to be doing what I like to call a mini-series. And in this mini-series, we're going to be looking at um, passages from the book of Philippians for our time of meditation. Now, this does not exclude our Wednesday night Bible study because that's going to continue. And I want to encourage you while I'm there to make sure that you are catching all of the videos. They are on YouTube. They are on my personal page, Dr. A. Reginald Littman. You can search my name, subscribe, hit the bell notification. You'll get all the notifications every time new content is loaded as well. They are uh, posted on New Mountaintop Baptist Church's page and you can go there subscribe to both of them because I put material out on both of them but there's going to be some things I'm going to put on my personal page that I'm not going to channel rather that I'm not going to put on the church channel so I want you to subscribe to both so that you'll be able to catch everything that we are putting out in this season now let me back up a minute how did y'all like yesterday's worship Sunday worship I know that right now I was in a I was in a discussion with a group of um pastors uh, from Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Um, yesterday, uh, I was in a little dialogue with my friend. Shout out to State Bishop Lionel Ketchings. He is, he is my friend and my brother, and I love him. Uh, and we were talking about how the dynamic is changing now, how we are inside, and consequently, our members' mindset is shifting. And it's a beautiful thing to me because we're not able to hold you for two hours virtually anymore. And so I was saying to them that it's important to understand. Oh, I'm glad y'all liked it. Praise God for that. It's important for us to understand that even when we get back, we won't be able to hold people for two and three hours because our retention span is shorter now. And a lot of my members, just like everybody else's members are, uh, what I call, and this is a joke the way I'm going to say this, I don't mean any, any harm, you know I'm full of fun and laughter, but we're church hopping virtually now <laughs> because we go from our own service to five or six other services and I think it's wonderful because it gives us an opportunity to see what other churches are doing, what other pastors are producing, and to even compare what we've been fed to what others are receiving and in many cases Many people may be saying, wow, I'm learning something over here that I didn't learn over here. Or they may be saying the opposite. Wow, thank God for what I'm being fed and what I'm being given because it's at a level that's, you know, it may be slightly more informative or inspirational or more connected or whatever than what you're hearing in different places. And so um, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this time because it keeps me on my toes uh, because it is it is not that easy to hold the attention span that long. And so it is uh, disciplining me personally to to deliver God's word in a concise amount of time. And so a 15 minute message can be more powerful than an hour and 55 minute message. Can I get a witness right there? OK, <laughs> I can't hear y'all saying nothing. You must not agree with me. Um, so it's important for us to be mindful. And I think that this is a time of growth. Um, thank you so much for that, Brendy. I appreciate that. Um, Sunday was a blessing. Awesome. Awesome. Carol, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, Marilyn Vines, hey, welcome to you. Hello. Welcome to you. Grew up in the house of God, saints in Christ. All right. All right. All right. You got some deep roots, strong roots, Pentecostal roots that will hold you in a storm. Amen. That's our home church 
and organization, the House of God, Saints in Christ. So welcome, Cynthia Easley. So let me jump into this because I've gotten comfortable now. I'm just visiting with you all, and this is wonderful. But let me give you the word of the Lord for today. And I want to talk to you today about uh, this next couple of days, this week, rather. We're going to do a little mini series that I'm just, just calling Peace in the Midst of It All. Initially, I had called it Pandemic Peace, but then I noticed that uh, I was beginning to see some indications that uh, social media wants us to stay away from that C word because so many people are giving out information that are not doctors. And uh, so I, I decided to stay away from that that pandemic word and talk about peace in the midst of it all. And it comes from the book of Philippians. And I want you to join me every day this week as we're going to walk through the book of Philippians, just kind of highlighting a verse from the book of Philippians. Today, I'm going to begin with Philippians chapter number one and verse number six. If you have your Bible, great. If you don't, jot it down, jot it down. Philippians chapter one, verse number six. And it reads like this. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me get one of my scribes to put that in for me. For those who may be coming in a little bit later, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this, th this very thing, just the scripture, Philippians 1 and 6, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. This is virtual church here. What I want us to understand is that when we look at this verse of scripture, we're looking at Paul speaking confidence in chaos. And that's what I want to talk about for the next five minutes. And then we're going to pray and I'm going to dismiss you and give you the benediction. But confidence in chaos. If somebody will put that in the com comments for me, confidence in chaos chaos is what this verse is talking about. Now, the book of Philippians is very interesting, and I'll be highlighting this this entire week. This book is known as the book of joy, the book of peace, the book of love in the New Testament. For in Philippians, we see four chapters. and Paul is writing a jailhouse letter. He is imprisoned, and yet he writes this four chapter letter to the people at Philippi. He longed to be there with them, but because of the seeds that he had sown into their lives, they began to know Jesus and to grow and be productive, faithful Christians, loyal Christians. Yet they were left with questions, just like the questions over the young lady's head that's on this picture if you're looking at it on Facebook. They were left with questions as to how do you live? How do you have joy? How do you have peace? How do you be a productive, faithful Christian when we're being persecuted, when we're going through hard times? Christians at that time were persecuted and they were, in fact, Paul was in prison himself simply because he was preaching Jesus and they had to get rid of him. And this, of course, is after the resurrection of Christ. They had to get rid of everything and everyone who represented Jesus Christ, everything and everyone who would have a message that was representative of the Christ that had been crucified because they were taking people away from the monotonous controlling religions of Judaism and the times giving people hope in the midst of a hostile situation. They were preaching and Paul wanted to go to Rome and preach in the great amphitheater. But he was detained and under house arrest and unable to go to Rome to preach in the amphitheater. That was his great goal, his great hope. And he's in prison in the book of Philippians. Yet when you read this powerful book, you'll discover that Paul says some major things in the first chapter of Philippians. He says to the people of God, every time I think of you, I thank God. That's chapter one, verse number three. Every time I remember you, 
I thank God for you. He says to them in chapter one, verse number two, grace to you and peace from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He offers them grace and peace in the midst of, I want to say pandemic, in the midst of their problems. And God like also offers us grace and peace in the midst of our problem time. God is offering us his grace, his love, his reaching out to us that we don't necessarily deserve it. But just because he's so good, he gives it to us anyway. And he grants it to us anyway. You know, you wake, you woke up this morning because of nothing but grace. Nothing but grace is what brought you to the point that you're at right now. That you still have a house or an apartment or some type of shelter. That's grace. But here's the key word in this entire four chapters of Philippians is the word peace. Somebody write that down. Type that in right now. Peace. God wants to give you peace in the midst of it all. Now, what's amazing to me is that Paul is in jail and his destiny is uncertain. He doesn't know what's coming next. He doesn't know if they're going to kill him. He doesn't know if this will be his final hour, his final moment, his final message. But watch this. Come close. Paul lived until the day he died. And we don't know how long we're going to be in the shape we're in. But we learn a powerful lesson from the apostle. Live until the day you die. Don't let anything stop you from living until the day you die. Stop planning out your obituary. It's good to have everything in place and we should all have all of that information in place. We all need a will. We all need uh, uh, all of those types of things. We all need insurance. We all need all those types of things, but live until the day you die. Man, Paul is in prison, but he is still praising. He's in prison, but he's still encouraging the church. He is looking beyond his own personal, individual, momentary circumstances to bless other people. And that's how we have to live. And you get peace by giving peace. Did you hear what I said? Let me say it again. You get peace by giving peace to other people. You get love by giving love to other people. Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Now, I know you've only heard that passage in relation to giving financially tithe or offerings, but it is a principle that is unchanging. Whatever you give will be given back to you. So if you give peace, peace will be given back to you. If you give love, love will be given back to you. If you give joy, joy will be given back to you. How? Good measure, meaning in a great portion of it. It won't be small and minuscule, but it will be abundant. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give under your bosom? And that's what Paul is doing as he's ministering to these people through this prison epistle. And he says to them, every time I think, think of you, verse 3, chapter 1, Philippians, I thank God for you. He says them in the fourth verse. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. There it is. And that's the key word. Joy and peace are the key words in the book of Philippians. And that's what the Lord wants to bring into your life right now. Now, what is he having joy for? for? Verse 5, chapter 1, for your fellowship in the gospel from this, from the first day unto now. He's thankful to God that they are part of each other's life. You have to learn how to thank God for the people God has brought into your life. Something is wrong with anybody that's not loving right now. Something is wrong with anybody who does not share the love of Christ and who is not even more thankful Ooh, for the people God has brought into your life. Paul is sequestered. Paul is in prison. Paul is on shutdown. Paul is on quarantine. Paul is limited. Paul is sheltered in place. 
but he is not alone. He's chained to a Roman soldier eight hours a day in three shifts per day. So three times a day, a soldier is chained to him for an eight hour shift. Think about that for a minute. No privacy. When he had to relieve himself, he's shackled. If he wanted to have a private conversation, he couldn't. So what does he do while he is sheltered in place, while he is imprisoned, while he is locked up in jail? He decides to be an encourager. And for somebody who is listening or watching me right now, this is your time to be an encourager. Not a discourager, an encourager. And Paul encourages not only the church, and we'll see this as we get to the next few chapters of Philippians this week, and I'm just highlighting the major point of every chapter this week. If you just came in, we're in Philippians 1 and 6. Uh, And Paul preaches the gospel to the soldiers that are chained to him. And you know what happens? He's converting prisoners one by one. He wanted to go to preach in the amphitheater in Rome, but instead he is on lockdown in prison. So he uses his prison as a pulpit. Don't miss this. It's a good place to shout. It's coming up right about now. God has us sheltered. God has us inside, but he doesn't want us to keep the love inside, the joy inside, the peace inside. He wants us to spread and share the power that we have experienced with others and turn your predicament into a pulpit. Now you don't need to have a collar and a chain. You don't need to have gone through catechism through seminary. You don't need to have been a pastor, then an overseer and then promoted to a Bishop in order to preach. What do you know about Jesus? What has he done for you? Share it with other people. And Paul This is so good, y'all. Paul says, and we'll get to it. I won more people to Christ from prison than I ever could if I had been free. Think about it. He's preaching seven days a week. As I look at my own life, I'm preaching six and seven days a week. And more encouragement is coming out of me now than it ever did in one or two sermons on the weekend. So I'm thankful to God for these chains. I'm thankful to God because God is using these chains to bring change. Let me say it again. You may have missed it. I said, God is using these chains to bring change. Isn't that wonderful? Aunt Elaine, Deacon Charles, God is using these chains to bring change. So we must be an encourager. Now, verse number six, I had to introduce you to the book. Here's what I want to get to, and I'm done. Being confident, verse six, chapter one, Philippians one and six, for those of you on the phone, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, here's what Paul is saying. He's saying, I can't be there in person with you. Oh, how I wish I could be there to lay hands on the sick right now, to pray for people right now. Oh, how I wish I could embrace the church right now. Oh, how I wish I could just see your smiling face in person. Oh, how I wish I could be there to comfort you in person right now for your pain or for your loss or for your agony or your grief or whatever it is that you may going be going through. But watch what Pastor Paul says, the apostle the bishop of this church at Philippi, watch what he says to them. He says to them, even though I can't be there with you, I am 1000% confident that the same Lord, the same God who started something in you is going to finish everything he started in you. And he's going to complete everything he began. And he's going to do it until the return of Christ. And here's what Paul is saying. I have so much confidence in my chaos. 
And notice this, his confidence is not in himself, is not in his ability, is not in his oratorical skills, is not in his training in the seminary of his day at the foot of Gamaliel. His confidence is in Jesus Christ, who had called the church of Philippi, who had saved the saints of Philippi, who was changing the people of Philippi, who was causing the people of Philippi to still grow, even though he was absent. God was present. And here's what I want to say to you. You can have chaos or you can have confidence in the chaos. I choose to have confidence in the Christ who made the chaos, who manages the chaos and who can maneuver the chaos. How about you? And I trust God to take care of those that I can't get to. And that's where Paul is. And it's such a beautiful book. That is full of joy. And here's the encouragement for you today. All of us have family and relatives someplace that we wish we could get to. All of us have loved ones that we, we just want to look in on. We just want to check on them. And we have Zoom and technology and all of that, but there's nothing like being there in person. All pastors right now would love to be in their pulpit. Even the sorry and lazy ones that, that, that you know, <laughs> that don't like to preach and whatever. Everybody would love to be in their pulpit. Everybody would love to have that congregation. Everybody would love to be able to put their hands on the people. You would love to be able to embrace your grandkids or your mother or your father or your family that's in Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Texas, Utah, wherever they may be. But Paul says when you can't get to the ones you love, you can have confidence in this chaos knowing he will complete what he has begun. He will take care of your family. He will take care of your relatives. He'll take care of your church. He'll take care of your loved ones. And you know what else? He'll take care of you. Do I have a witness that he'll take care of you? And that's what I wanted to drop in your spirit today. That's Philippians chapter number one and verse number six. And tomorrow we'll go to chapter two. I want you to go ahead and pre-read. Pre-read chapter two, finish up chapter one, and we'll go into that on tomorrow. But right now I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. And you know how we do it here. We send up hearts while we're praying. And so I want you to send up those hearts as we pray unto our great Savior. And let's go before the throne of grace, knowing that he's not only able to take care of everything he's given to us, but he can take care of us. Won't he do it, somebody? Father, I thank you because you are the God who hears and answers prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to take care of us. Thank you, Jesus, for the words of the Apostle Paul who let us know that even in the most chaotic of times we can still have confidence in our chaos. We can still know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you've never failed. There's nothing you can't do. There's no one you don't see. Lord, you see our president. You see our Congress. You see the White House. You see China. You see Italy. You see California. You see New York, you see New Jersey, you see Albany, Georgia. You got the whole world in your hand and that's why it's not difficult for you to see what's going on. And Father, we thank you today because not only do you see, but you care. And not only do you care, but you're capable. Thank you, Father, for peace in the midst of it all we don't understand any of it but we know you can give us peace in the middle of all of it and so god today we surrender it all to you and in the words of the old hymn all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give i will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live So God, keep us now. 
give us your peace. Give us that peace that surpasses all understanding and let it guard our hearts and minds. Thank you so much for these encouraging words from this book of Philippians. Now, Lord, bless us and keep us in your way. And for whatever you do, we promise you not some of the praise, but all of the praise. Why? You're worthy. You are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you joined me today. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life, and I am confident that he who has begun a good work in you is able to complete it. And he will until his return. Well, God bless you. I'm going to close today's webcast with a hymn, um, an old favorite of the church, and uh, invite you to stay around and listen if you like. If not, the Lord bless you. We'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Don't forget to join us for Bible study on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on YouTube, both channels. God bless y'all. Have a great day. Jesus me the cross oh there just and it's free free It's in the cross. Oh, in the cross. Oh, in the cross. Be my glory ever. Be my Rapture soul till my rapture soul shall find. Lord, help me find rest beyond the real. in the cross. Come on, lift your voices. Oh, yeah. The cross. Oh, yeah. Be my glory ever. Be my glory. My glory ever. Be
help me find rest. Rest me young. I mean, you know, it get kind of hard down here sometimes. But this is not the end. I'm going to find rest. Yes, sir. God bless your family. Thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to sharing with you on tomorrow at 12 noon. Make sure you share this video so that others may hear the teaching from today. I think it will really bless them as we share from the book of Philippians this week. God bless you and have a marvelous, marvelous Monday.